In this video, I'm going to implement autocomplete using jQuery. Now, autocomplete is good because we know that we can provide a predefined list of words or phrases or terms or something. And as the user types, it will filter down that list and find an appropriate match, which means we're saving the user a lot of typing and we're getting better data coming in because there's less chance for mistypes or for two people using different words to mean the same thing. So we know we can create an autocomplete like this with HTML, but a jQuery autocomplete gives, in this form is a good example of that. You see that we're creating a specimen and for plant, we're expecting a number, but plants aren't numbers and we should not expect our user to assume that a plant is a number. So eventually we're going to have this autocomplete where we can type a plant name and it will resolve to a number. That will take several steps. And in this step, we're simply going to fill in the autocomplete using jQuery. So let's get started. The page that we're looking at is rendered in Time Leaf with Spring Boot, which means that we can compose one HTML page out of several fragments, but what the browser sees will be the final finished source. So this page does come from several micro HTML pages, but the main page is one called start.html, which is what we're going to edit here. So first of all, we need to import jQuery, and just like Bootstrap, and several others, we can use a CDN or a content delivery network to do this. So I'm simply pasting up our jQuery, essentially import lines up at the top. And of course, this will be available in GitHub if you want to take a closer look at it. Next thing that we need to do is we need to put an identifier on the input field that we want to have an autocomplete on. And for us, it's the one called plant. Remember plant, the one with the number right there? So we want this text box to have an autocomplete. So I look down, I see input type equals text, and there are several other attributes that are defined here. Bootstrap, time leaf, HTML, and several others can define these attributes, and we can put them all in one HTML tag, which means we can implement multiple libraries, which is great. For this one, though, we simply need to uh, specify an ID or a unique identifier, and I'm going to call that plant underscore name and put it in quotes. So that's all we need to change on our existing form. The rest of the logic will simply go up here in the head section. So let's say script type equals, and then we'll say text JavaScript. And all the logic for this autocomplete will live down here within the script section we're defining now. So there's a lot of symbols, so I'm going to try to do one line at a time before I get into some crazy nesting, because we'll see the last couple lines in with several symbols. So first of all, let's define a function. Dollar sign, open paren, and then the word function, open and close paren, open curly, close curly, and enter. And this space is where we're going to be doing a lot of our work. We want to terminate this with a semicolon. Now, within the function, we want to attach an autocomplete to our input type text ID equals plant name down here. So we need to get a reference to this specific input field, but we need to get that reference in our function. And here's how we're going to do it. We simply say dollar sign open paren and then double quote inside the double quote pound symbol and then plant underscore name. That's the identifier, remember, we attached to that input field. And then dot autocomplete. Open paren, close paren, and then within that open curly, close curly. This is where I say we get a lot of symbols. Right now, while it's on your mind, before you forget, terminate that close paren with a semicolon. Now within here, we can define some attributes that describe our autocomplete. And one is a source. So I'm, I say source and then open square bracket, close square bracket, and then comma. And within that open and close square bracket, I can specify a list of strings that I want to qualify for autocomplete. The strings need to be in quotes and they need to be comma separated. So Eastern, Redbud, comma, Eastern, White Pine, comma, Eastern, Red Cedar. Now, I have about 6,000 plants defined, and so you see I'd have to do quite a bit of typing here if I typed out every single plant. So one thought is, can we actually grab data from a dynamic source like a JSON RESTful uh, service endpoint? And the answer is yes, we can. 
A little trick here that's good to know. If we're using square brackets, that means that the autocomplete data is here locally within an array. But if we surround this with quotes, it assumes it's a URL to a JSON or RESTful endpoint. So the specific character that follows the source colon, whether it's a square bracket or a double quote, determines where to find that data, locally or remotely. Okay, next we want to specify min length, which is the minimum number of characters that someone should type before the autocomplete starts making suggestions. We'll start this at two, and you'll notice that each of my predefined suggestions begin with Eastern, which means that if I start typing EA, I'll see all three, but then when I get to red, it should limit down to just two. The application is restarted, so let's take a look at what we have. For plant, notice if I type E, I don't see anything. If I type A, now I see those three predefined choices. Now I type Eastern, R, E, and you notice that it filters down to just two predefined choices, R, E, D, B, and finally our Eastern Red Bud. So in this video, we've seen how to make a simple autocomplete with jQuery. Stay tuned in the next video. We're going to see how to source the data from a remote source and a source that might be changing over time. And then in a video following that, we'll see how we can show the user an English-like name, name in whatever the user's native language is, and get back a number in return, where a number is what we can process a lot faster as a computer. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.